Hello and welcome back. Today we are going to look at the classes, structure, absorption and properties of local anesthesias. Local anesthesia, a drug which causes a reversible regional anesthesia and a loss of nociception. Basically, there are two classes of these local anesthesias. We have ester local anesthetics and an amide local anesthetics. Ester local anesthetics consists of procaine, cocaine, tetracaine, benzocaine, and amethocaine. On the other hand, amide local anesthetics consists of lignocaine or lignocaine, bupivacaine, which is a trade name of marcaine, articaine, and mepivacaine. One of the things that we need to look at is the absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion of local anesthetics. Most of these local anesthetics are absorbed well once they have been administered. They are metabolized depending on the type of the local anesthesia. Esters are hydrolyzed by enzyme known as pseudocholinesterase, which is found in plasma. The rate of hydrolysis can impact the potential toxicity of this drug. Some patients have an hereditary condition known as atypical pseudocholinesterase whereby they have a less active enzyme, therefore more predisposed to toxicity. Amide local anesthetics undergo by transformation of metabolism in the liver by an enzyme known as liver amidase. A metabolite of prelocane may cause a condition known as methyl hemoglobinemia, whereby hemoglobin does not carry enough oxygen or as, or as required physiologically. When looking at the structure of uh, local anesthetics, the structure is composed of three parts or components. The first part is the lipophilic or hydrophobic part made of an aromatic benzene ring and it is a water heating part. An hydrophilic part is made of an amine group and the lipophilic together with hydrophilic sections are connected by a linkage. This linkage is a basis for classification of the local anesthetics. Esters have an ester linkage, therefore known as ester local anesthetics, and amides have an amide linkage where they derive their name from. Local anesthetics can be administered parenterally via the subcutaneous route, intradermal or intrathecal route, or they can also be administered topically on the skin. Esters and amides are both eliminated via kidneys and some are excreted in an unchanged state. So you need to take care when you're using these drugs in patients who have severe kidney dysfunction. When the local anesthetics are co-administered with alpha-1 agonists, the absorption of local anesthetics to systemic circulation is lowered and the effects of local anesthetics are prolonged. Toxicity is also reduced in these cases. When comparing esters and amides, esters have a short duration of action compared to amides. Amides are known to have a longer duration, for example, a drug known as bupivacaine or macaine, that's why it is used in long surgeries. Esters are less intense and higher risk of hypersensitivity is associated with their use, therefore they are rarely used. Esters are hydrolyzed by plasma enzyme known as plasma cholinesterase and rarely used for infiltration anesthesia useful for topical use in mucous membranes amides have a longer duration of action and more intense they bind to an alpha 1 acid glycoprotein and not hydrolyzed by plasma cholinesterase but they are metabolized in the liver by liver amidases these amides are rarely cause hypersensitivity and there is no cross the activity with ester local anesthesias An ideal local anesthetic should compose of the following properties. It should provide a reversible action and 
should not be irritating to the side of action or to the patient. It is not supposed to cause an allergic reaction or hypersensitivity reaction and no systemic toxicity is supposed to be associated with it. This local anesthetic should have a rapid onset of action and a sufficient duration of action to sustain surgery. It should be potent and stable in solutions. And also, it should not interfere with the healing of tissues and is supposed to have a vasoconstrictor action and obviously not an expensive drug.